Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship, and we are not meeting right now until the governor allows it. I do something called the philosophy of the end of days. Why were you born for such a time as this? What do you need to know? What's going to be your reality going forward? Today, we're going to be discussing partying like it's 1844 because we're talking about three groups that were really more 1800s based. Prior to Israel getting its reign back, prior to Israel becoming a nation state, and really prior to the modern age. But these people have a strong eschatology. And you're going to see these 50 million people out on the streets talking to you about the end of days. So you need to know a few things about it because they're going to be partying like it's 1844 because they've been working on this stuff for 190 years in terms of their theology. So it's going to be disparate stuff today. Just get used to it, okay? It's going to be eschatology all over the place. And so I try not to do that with you. Um, and so basically, this is from Steve Quayle, who has his own website. And if you if you want to hit something that will give you the quick news, Rapture Ready gives you quick news. Steve Quayle gives you quick news in terms of biblical stuff that you need to be aware of. Um, and so he was interviewed by Dave Hodges. And their commentary is, when the Great Tribulation hits, nobody's going to know. It, it really, the Christians are going to be clueless. And so these other three faiths from the 1844 time frame, 1859, things like that, 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, they're going to have a fully built out eschatology. They're going to know it. It's going to be down cold. You're going to ask them a question. They're going to give you the perfect answer. It's not going to be right, but in terms of it's just where their eyes don't move from side to side. They're literally recalling what they've memorized and giving it back to you. And so normally you can tell people are creating stuff when their eyes are moving from side to side. Okay? No, 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 no. This is a memorized eschatology. All three have that. Okay? So um, they have the battle plans. They're ready to go. And when things start kicking into gear, you're going to see these people show up. And they're going to be nice looking people, very nice, dear, sweet people with a bad eschatology. Okay, I try not to twist the Bible. I try to give you real prophets um, and try not to twist the news or anything like that. It's a philosophy of the end of days. <laughs> Sorry. Well, what people are trying to do also with the leaders of these group is, groups is rehab them. Okay, so Amy Winehouse trying to make me go to rehab, I say, no, no, no. And so, you know, at some point in time, you're going to have 50 million people out there saying, I want you to learn more about Joseph Smith and Charles Taze Russell and Ellen White. And whatever they said back in 1820, 30, 40, 50, 60, that's the word of the Lord or the spirit of prophecy, so to speak. And whether whether you believe it or not, they're going to tell you some factoids that make sense because they worked on it for 190 years and you don't have that firm of an eschatology. I do, but they're not coming and asking me questions. Okay, so everybody's going to fail. No one guessed or prophesied COVID-19. No one. God is not probably not allowing anyone to mention these things. Normally, he mentions it to the prophets first, but at some point in time, everybody's going to realize we're getting this stuff wrong, okay? And also, keep in mind also, I, I have this little picture up, the, up on the upper right-hand side. Um, every single one of these three groups is replacement theology, which is wrong, 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 because Israel is a nation state. None of them saw it coming. And so, keep in mind, even my eschatology is changing day by day by day. Okay, case in point, Comet Atlas blew up yesterday. I was not a happy camper. I was looking forward to seeing green comets in the sky. And <laughs> comets don't usually survive, especially when they come closer to the sun. And, and when they get near gravity, stronger gravity, um, they just disintegrate. So Atlas blew up. Big deal. There are always been another comet coming. You know, there's always one more comet, and I think there's six up in the sky right now anyway. Okay, so let's start digging into what caused me to record this. The There was a 5.7 earthquake back in March 18th at Salt Lake City, and it knocked the trumpet, which is very interesting, out of Moroni's mouth. Okay, and so that would be symbolizing Moroni is their angel. They made him up. Um, and so 
they believe that, you know, he's going to be part of the end times and he'll be flying around and doing what he's supposed to be doing and things like that. So keep in mind, they have a detailed eschatology, but all of this stuff is going to fall. So when the trumpet fell out of his mouth, it's like that's a sign, people, that these eschatologies are going to fall hard. OK, and so in some cases, their theology is going to fall, too. Now, of the three groups, um, keep in mind that I'm very close friends with the Seventh-day Adventists, and they are not a, a problematic place. They have good theology in most cases. I don't like Ellen White, um, but their theology is good. Their eschatology is blech. And that's what they really want to talk to you about, is their eschatology. They believe that's their gift. So um, let's deal with the Mormon church. They believe that Jesus and Lucifer are spirit brothers. Yep. And that they have the best Latter-day revelations and that God is, uh, you know, basically turning us all into uh, gods and we'll all get planets. Uh, God lives on the planet or star of Kolov, uh, someplace out there in the uh, universe, and that we'll all get basically solar systems. Okay. Well, that's false. And that's all going to fall apart. Once again, the... Um, LDS, the Mormons, are replacement theology. No Israel, okay? Um, Joseph Smith founded it in about the 1820s. Um, they started to move around because people didn't like them at all. Their theology was just not right. And so um, he came up with his own book of the Bible, um, and he pulled a lot of information from the Bible, so it sounds plausible. Um, but it's it's got some weird stuff in it. Okay, then they left for Utah in in 1848, and they got there. Um, Glenn Beck is a major Mormon. Uh, the Marriott uh, Hotel chain, nice people. I just don't agree with Glenn Beck. Um, I think he's a Mormon first and a Constitutionalist second. Um, and so uh, the Mormon eschatology, they believe this is accurate that there will be increasing war, earthquakes, hurricanes, and man-made disasters prior to the second coming. Yep, absolutely. Um, Christ will reign for a thousand years. All of this is correct, but yet there's some Kool-Aid going on here, okay? Uh, you have to accept Joseph Smith as a prophet, and the Book of Mormon, translated from the Nephi plates, as an inspired message from God. You have to, okay? And so <laughs> that makes it false right there, and you know it. So they're nice, sweet people. When they come to your door, be nice to them. Um, they'll, they'll be nice to you. They would make great neighbors. Their eschatology and theology is so flawed. Well, actually, you know what? Their eschatology so far isn't that flawed. It's just, it's the plan of things. It's the Jesus, Satan, being brothers, blah, blah, blah. It's the white horse prophecy. So when you see Mitt Romney driving you crazy by running against the Republicans all day, every day, it's because he wants to be the Messiah. He wants to be the white horse prophecy. Now, we can't prove that it was actually written back in 1843, which is interesting because I'm going to be showing you 1843, 1844 is a huge sea change during that time frame. And so, you know, they believe that at some point in time, the Constitution is going to be in a crisis and hang like a thread, and it's going to be saved by a Mormon-like guy, and it would be a Romney-type person. So that's what they believe. So Romney is always going to be a rogue because he believes he's going to save the United States. And he's believed it for many, many years, and people, uh, they wanted him to be president to save the Constitution. Well, um, so once again, there's the planet Kolob. That's the center of the universe. That's where God lives. Um, it could be a star um, and the other planets. We've never found any of these planets. They have a song. It's rather pretty, actually, if we could heed to the planet Kolob. Um, and then so they believe that you move along through this progression and you're like a mortal being. And then you become more godlike and more godlike. And if you're a sinner, you know, you uh, go to this place, and if you're a saint, you go to that place, and then you get to marry lots of women. Um, not such a good deal for the women. Um, and, <laughs> you know, um, they get to their own planet or their own solar system, whatever. Okay, so you know it's false. We have to now go into the other two groups because they kind of came out of this rapture movement that was in the 1830s. So this is... This is a source that I tend to agree with, that the Catholic Church was really unhappy that as we went into the Reformation, Luther, Calvin, others, all these Reformations hated the Pope, hated the Pope, because the Pope wanted to kill them. So basically, they were suggesting that the Pope was the final Antichrist. 
and it makes sense biblically in some ways. Um, I can see how they came up with it. Uh, many Jews believe that too. And so um, then Manuel Lacunza uh, edited that work in the 18th century. Then in the 19th century, Edward Irving was a charismatic and started to click a little bit. Then it went to Darby and uh, his Plymouth brethren over in England. And then it went to Schofield and Schofield populated it to every single cemetery, seminary across America, and really across the world in many ways. So he taught dispensationalism and pre-trib rapture, and then it moved on and on and on. And now most of the pastors, whether they're cessationists, which means that God ceased with prophecy and tongues and other gifts, or if they're continuationists, which means that they continue on, they tend to believe in the rapture, the pre-trib rapture. Um, and it's setting up this, this doctrine is setting up a situation where it's not going to work out exactly the way they want it to work out, and, and many are going to fall away. It's going to be horrible. Um, and, and, and I am not a cessationist. Okay, I'm a continuationist. That means the gifts have always been there. We have fallen out of favor with God at times because we're, we're thick. <laughs> and we're sinful, um, but but God has always been there willing to give us gifts, okay? So Darby taught dispensationalism. We'll talk about it. Now, of course, I'm thrilled that they're pro-Israel, and so they did get that right, and Schofield is very pro-Israel. Um, dispensationalism takes different shapes and forms. Plymouth Brethren is, once again, a low church. It's conservative. Um, they really don't have a, a big structure, and so they started in the 1820s in Dublin, Ireland, and, and so they're really just a very small conservative church with 46,000 members. Then dispensationalism kicked out, and then the rapture kicked out, and it became very, very popular. I, as a Messianic and as more of a Jewish believer in Jesus, would say that, that God doesn't change his mind. He doesn't say that it works for Abraham, it works for Noah, it works for David, but then that stuff is all done, and now... The, the Christians get grace, David doesn't get grace, Noah doesn't get grace. Well, the problem is in Hebrew, can, in, 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 in Greek, it's charis, charisma. Um, and so it's consistent throughout the Bible, guys. It just is. So these dispensations are just bunk. Um, and so I really don't like it, but you know what? They've got all the money and all the power. So they're the Reformed pastors, and they make all the money out there. I mean, they preach the rapture. Most of the Reformed guys do, and most of the, most of the continuationists do, too, which is weird. It really took hold. Um, now, this is from a Canadian source. The rapture doctrine is one of the more newer doctrines. Um, the Sinner's Prayer is newer, uh, brought in by Billy Sunday and Billy Graham in 1935. Um, John Nelson Darby really was the first one to preach it um, in 1830, and then it... Um, then it was kicked out by other people, um, and, and so, uh, you know, it was fleshed out more and more and more. But prior to 1830, no church taught it, okay? Um, the secret rapture is, is a false doctrine, according to this particular site. Um, I, I have problems with it because it's not in the Bible, guys. It's just not there, okay? Um, and then, um, but they got one thing right, Israel's modern statehood uh, in 1948. So they, they got that right, and that's why it sells pretty well, because they won on that. So not all dispensationalists believe in the rapture. You're right. Okay. Uh, there are many different types of people. Premillennial means before the thousand years of the rapture people. The dispensationalists uh, alive today believe the Bible reveals the general era of when Christ will return. Yes. Yes, I, I do believe that. Um, and so the Seventh-day Adventists uh, have dates set it as Millerites. Jehovah's Witnesses have many, many times. And so this guy is citing basically that you can figure out the date based on Israel gaining statehood. Well, you can't, okay, based on 1948. So these people are date setters. The problem is with the rapture people. They date set, they date these, they, you know, William Miller, Charles Russell, uh, Ronald Weinhard, Wineland, uh, Harold Camping in 2011. I remember seeing the, the uh, billboards. Um, you know, it's teasing. It's, it's, and Jeffrey Kreider to this day. Um, be careful of Jeffrey Grider because he's always setting dates all the time. Oh, it's a perfect day. Oh, I'm not setting a day, but yeah, he's setting a date. Um, and so we're not supposed to do that. Um, be careful. If your church is preaching the rapture and requires it, 
that may not be a healthy chart for you as the events kick off more and more and more. It's, it's not going to be a happy place. So now, what we have is we move along that we come up with this rapture doctrine, then the Millerites grab it and run with it and say, oh, we've done our analysis and the end of the world is going to occur probably April 23rd of 1843. So Miller, William Miller, a farmer from New York, said, yep, this is it. Um, so between 18, 1843 and 1844, we're going to have the rapture. And then it didn't happen. So those people kind of morphed into the Seventh-day Adventists. Okay, the Mormons generally went for 1891 for their rapture date based on 56 years from 1835. Okay, and one more time, just so you can hear it from my lips, one more time. Mormons are, are a cult, yes. Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult. The SDAs are not. They're actually very close to good theology. Um, you know, I'm just not an Ellen White fan. Okay, so Ellen White on the top here, I just wanted to mention real quick because we're talking about kind of all three. Um... She, they really became a denomination about 1855 as they started to publish and as she gained control of the organization, she became their chief prophet, whether you believe in her or not. So if you hear the phrase spirit of prophecy, that means Ellen White said it. And that means that Trump's scripture, which is bad. That's why I don't like it. So once again, they picked the dates, 1843, 1844, and then they called it the Great Disappointment. And they based it off, instead of going with Daniel's days, they went years. Now you can say, well, that's wrong. It says days and it isn't years and it's, it's not supposed to be years. Well, Isaac Newton did the same thing and he might have been the smartest man ever born. So um, the Millerites splinter out after that and they become dysfunctional groups and things like that because they realized they were wrong. A group becomes the Seventh-day Adventists and they basically hold on to good theology. Uh, they believe in a second coming. They state the great disappointment, which is totally wrong. Investigative judgment, which is wrong. And Ellen White is not a prophet. And so they move forward on their own. The, the Watchtower is part of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they start predicting date after date after date after date of a rapture date. And they've been wrong time and time and time again. Now, I want to state um, that I have a problem with investigative judgment from Ellen White because it's unique to the SDAs. No one else believes in it. It's based off the fact that they missed in 1844 um, and with the Millerites. And so <clears throat> it requires uh, basically this thought process that the temple in heaven, um, that, 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 that heaven was filthy and it needed cleaning because God messed up on the date. And so God missed this rapture date. So that means that we go into this weird thing called investigative judgment in the meantime. It's ridiculous. They're the only people to believe in it. And they have good theology otherwise. So now we're moving on to Charles Taze Russell and the Jehovah's Witnesses. They did not technically come from the Millerites. They started later, um, but they're similar. And they grew up in about the same area of upstate New York. So he's been predicting failed rapture dates after failed rapture dates. And they just, because they're a cult, they can get away with that, okay? There's their watchtower building in New York City. I think they sold it just recently here. Um, they believed that the 144,000 of Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14 are the Jehovah's Witnesses alone. But then they became more than 144,000, so they dropped that belief. So they've been wrong all the way through, but they just, I don't know. When you are a cult, you can't figure out the truth. It's just not possible. And they keep the donations coming in. So um, once again, errant dates all the time. They believe Jesus has been ruling in heaven as king since 1914. Um, they believe in Armageddon. They do. Um, but you have to obey their church or else if you aren't a willing subject you're not going to have and things like that so that's 8.68 million people so keep in mind we're going to get to 50 million people in total through all three of these groups you know like the sdas are 25 million and the the mormons are 16 million so that's 50 million people coming at you okay they they have a publication called the watchtower it's just bunk it's junk it's it's errant dates and so russell's teachings were described as equivalent in, to the reputation of the Lord. No, they're not. Okay. Now we move on through the Jehovah's Witnesses. And one way to out them also is the fact that 
um, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a, a weird view of the four horsemen, um, where the first one is Jesus and you know things like that. And but so do the jo the um, <laughs> the uh, Seventh Day Adventists. They have basically the same thought process. So this is SDA, and there are 25 million people. Okay, going strong. Uh, the first seal is the white horse. That's Jesus. So rather than being a copy and and being one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Jesus is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I mean, it's just so errant. It's ridiculous. They're the only guys that believe in this, other than a few uh, like like the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. The second seal is the persecuting church. Okay. So what's that? But that's what they believe. The third seal, the black horse, is the corrupt church. The fourth seal is the pale horse. That's the dead church. The fifth seal is the martyr church. The sixth seal, they're so wrong in this. And it's laughable. And I have friends that are wonderful SDA people. And they know it's laughable, but they keep on preaching it. They believe the sixth seal opened in 1755 during the great earthquake of Lisbon, Portugal. Okay? <laughs> well, to make their theology, eschatology, rather work, they have good theology. But this is horrible eschatology. 1755. Okay, these seals are going to open up. We've opened up three of them already. We've got more to go. The sixth seal, at some point in time, we're going to have this horrific earthquake. And it was not Lisbon, Portugal of 1755. So, uh, as I mentioned before, they go through these manipulation of data. It says 2300 days or 1260 days in the Bible. They're going with the years. But as I mentioned, Isaac Newton did the same thing. They they calculate dates off random dates, you know, where the restoration of Israel is going to be here. So that's 2,520 years. <clears throat> and so it's just errant date after errant date. Okay. And then an errant prophecy here. This is Ellen White. We caught her in 1851. She said, old Jerusalem will never be built up. Okay. And, and so the Zionist state in Palestine was not a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And so, you know, she's wrong. She's a false prophet based on Israel alone. But when you look at the land in the 1800s, it was desolate, people. Desolate. So what do you do when you have 50 million fervent believers, believing in eschatology, that Jesus is returning, coming to your door and saying, hey, you want to talk about Jesus? And they're Mormons, and they're Jehovah's Witnesses, and they're clean cut, and they've got pretty smiles, and they want to talk about Jesus. Well, you're going to have to come up with an eschatology people, and it's not going to be the rapture, okay? It's just not going to be the pre-trib rapture. It's going to happen at the end. And so if you stick with me, at least you'll have some ideas and you can start working on your own eschatology because I'm not going to be completely right either. OK, there's going to be some variations like COVID-19. I didn't see that. OK, so I believe that we're into the fourth seal right now. You know, we're starting to see signs of it with the green comets everywhere. We have seen more signs of the fourth of the third seal. Um, keep in mind that 3.5 billion people out there live on about two to three bucks a day. And so they don't have a lot of food right now because locusts are eating their food, famine, uh, drought, other issues like that. So, yeah, we're still wealthy in America, but we're going to run out of money sooner or later. So most of these things are future for us. OK, and and so the the horse's directions are based on Zechariah 6 and Revelation 6. Very similar. I believe we've gone through these seals. These are the birth pangs. These are the birth pangs that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24. And so right now it's interesting that we're at 7 billion, 777 million, 777,777 lives as of about Passover of 2020. And so the seals look like what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24. And then these are the four judgments of the fourth seal. And that is the death of 1.94444 billion. Okay, but we haven't seen that yet. And so that's seal four, then seal five is martyrdom, and seal six is, six is yet to come, people. So think of things logically, not disparately, and be blessed as things move forward. But remember, you've got 50 million people that are going to stop by your house and talk to you about eschatology. So keep in mind, it's linear, people, and try not to get into the cults. Be blessed.